Hey friends, welcome to Cooking with Lane. And if you've been here for more than five minutes, you know that Cooking with Lane has absolutely nothing to do with food preparation whatsoever. The last time we were in this kitchen, we were cooking, let's see, silver and silver plate to make it shine again. The time before that, I think we were cooking antique hardware to get the paint off of it and make it shine like new. So in that fine tradition, today we're going to be cooking some more antiques. How many times have you, like me, been at an antique show, a boot sale, a tag sale, an estate sale, and stumbled across beautiful antique linens that you fall in love with, but don't you know, they're yellowed. They're spotted, they're dirty, they're stained, they're yellowed. And you think to yourself, I would love to have these linens, but they're worthless, they're disgusting. Nobody wants a dirty, spotted, gross, yellow linen on their table, on their coffee table, on their end table, on their dining room table. Nobody wants that. I don't wanna put a yellow bedspread on my bed. I don't wanna display a yellow tea dress on my dress form. So what do I do? Most of you may know, many of you may know, but some of you may not. And this video is for those of you who haven't yet learned the secret of how to remove those yellow, dingy stains from your antique linens. Now, I'm sure there are 5,000 videos on YouTube about how to do this. You may have a way that you prefer to do this, and that's great, but this is my way to do it. So if you don't like it, that's fine. I'm here to share it with you for free to see if it can be helpful to some of you. So let's talk about the few things that you're going to need. Like all of these projects, we try to keep the ingredient list super simple. So there are things you could just reach into your cabinet and grab because that's what everybody likes when it comes to preparing a dish, right? You want to be able to make the dish with the ingredients you have at home. So this is how it goes with whitening your linens with Lane. So let me show you what you're going to need. You need OxyClean. This is not a sponsored post. OxyClean does not pay me to say its name on this channel. However, this is the best product to use for this particular application. You're going to need one cup of good old fashioned baking soda. That's all that is. Love the way it feels though. And you'll notice I'm not showing you the box this time and that's because I bought the wrong box at the grocery store. I bought the one that you use that you just open up and stick in your refrigerator, help with the smell, but it doesn't open properly to dump the baking soda out. So I had to wrestle my way into it. It was bad. And then you need one tablespoon of table salt. Super easy. You need a stock pot about one third full of water. Don't you love my camera work? I'm very professional. And you need a strainer with a sink close by. That's going to be important. So you're going to want to fill your stock pot about one third of the way full of water and bring it to a rolling boil. Why one third of the way you ask? <laughs> well, once you start adding in your OxyClean, your baking soda, and your table salt, you're gonna have this fun little thing happen called a chemical reaction. And if the water is boiling and you put in that OxyClean, it's going to literally like elephant toothpaste all over the place. So you're gonna to wanna to add your OxyClean slowly and you don't want a full stock pot full of water. Something to note, this process is really designed for small linens. So napkins, uh, doilies, handkerchiefs, smaller pieces of white linen, white cotton. If you have large items, garments that you wanna do, large tablecloths that you want to do, you can replicate this process. You're gonna to wanna to double your ingredients, so two cups, two scoops, two cups, two tablespoons, and you're probably gonna to wanna to do it in your bathtub. Now, hot water is key to this process. So you're gonna to wanna to fill your bathtub with hot water. And that may mean that you even wanna bring some water to a boil on your stove and take it to your bathtub and dump it in there because having the water scalding hot is very important. The good thing is the bathtub is big enough that you won't get those crazy chemical reactions when you put your OxyClean and your baking soda in, so no worry about bubble over. Let me show you what we're gonna be cleaning today. So in our last restoration project, I stumbled, stumbled upon this little picnic basket. Isn't it darling? when I opened this picnic basket, let me show you what I found. Ta-da! This basket is absolutely full of wonderful antique linens that are perfectly usable were they not yellowed and turned with age. 
Look at these little baby gloves. Obviously those are leather. We're not going to be using those, but we have this beautiful filet lace, absolutely gorgeous pieces, but they're just dingy. They're grimy. They're in terrible, terrible shape. But what a treasure trove. So today we're going to be taking some of my favorites and turning them from gross, dingy yuck into beautiful white linens. Okay, we're ready to get started. Are you ready? Let's go. All right, you'll see that our water is almost at a boil. You know when water is almost at a boil, it just starts to bubble. You wanna take your OxyClean and slowly, slowly add it into your hot water. And you'll see why. You dump this in all at once, you're going to get extreme detergent overflow. This little bit of water will easily overflow this pot and cover this entire cook surface. I learned that the hard way. So we're gonna slowly add it in. Our trusty chemistry spoons, you've seen these before. Stirring it in. See how much our water's grown already? These are just suds, but it will boil over. So extreme caution is necessary when doing this process. Not because of the chemicals that you're using, they're not dangerous in any way, but boiling water, boiling over onto your cook stove and possibly onto you, very dangerous. So be careful. Reduce the heat on your water. I just had it on seven. I've turned it down to three. Unfortunately, I have an electric cook top, which I absolutely loathe, but adjust your heat. If it really starts to bubble up, if you turn the heat down on your water just a little bit, that'll help reduce the bubbling. Let's hope I didn't put too much in all at once. A little bit more. Because as the heat rises and it really does start to boil, that volume is gonna rise. So I actually turned the heat down a little bit more. Now we'll add our baking soda a little bit at a time. Now our salt. Turn that heat back up just a little bit so we know we've got a good boil going. So we're about to hit that rolling boil. And as we do, in go our linens. Big old batch of linen stew. Just what we need on this snowy afternoon. Just for anybody who's watching in this in the future, just so you know, this is being filmed during the snowpocalypse 2021. The year the South was blanketed in snow for more than a day. It's never happened before. So I put a little more water in just to make sure that my linens are fully covered by our water mixture. I'm gonna 
cover that and I'm gonna let it boil for about five minutes. <laughs> okay, so we've been letting our gross linen stew boil for about five minutes, maybe 10. I don't know, I didn't keep a timer. I just stirred it and watched it. So what I want you to see, I have camera, Ke I have camera in charge of the Kevin. I have Kevin in charge of the camera because I want you to be able to see where all the yellowing of the linen went. Are you ready? Here we go. Strainer, sink, pot. Look at the brown tea water. Going to run cold water over them, rinse them out really well. Oh, it's so cold, the water. Okay, let's go to the other side. Now let's dry them and see what happens. Here we are. After our process is done, are you ready to see? Remember that nasty, nasty filet lace that was brown? Look! Beautiful, white, usable, stain-free filet lace. Remember our gorgeous Battenberg that was crusty and brown? Once I press this, it's gonna be delicious. Our little doily, white as snow. Now, one thing I do wanna point out, this process may need to be repeated several times. This piece looks much better, considerably better. I would say this is usably better. However, I know very good and well that if I repeated this process two or even three times on this piece, I could reduce the amount of yellowing in the piece even more and really get it back to a pristine white like this one. So it depends upon the look that you want. Do you want any age at all in your pieces? If so, one run through, you're gonna be fine. If not, repeat the process just like we did before and you'll get your pieces back to brand new white. Now, remember on very fine fabrics like Guan, you can damage them if you repeat this too many times. So make sure that you give your fabrics a little bit of a break. If they're delicate fabrics, like this is a heavy coarse linen, it's gonna be able to take a little bit of abuse through this process. But a lace, a fine lace like this, or a lawn or a wall, those fabrics, you really need to be very cautious as you do this process with them. Don't put them in the boiling, boiling water, put them in hot water in the bathtub. Um, and really make sure you rinse, rinse, and rinse again after you pull them out because we don't want any of that baking soda or salt to linger in those fabrics, which can degrade them over time. So, I hope you've enjoyed this little look into how to save your antique linens to be used another day. See you next time on Cooking with Lane.